Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. It's been one of the most trying weeks for many Nigerians. We've recorded more deaths than we have in a really long time, and many are sad and angry about it all. We pray for those who've lost loved ones that they will be comforted, and we ask for wisdom and determination on the part of the leadership to protect lives and property. And that being said, to the program now, in the past week and the weekend, European leaders have been discussing a workable solution towards curbing illegal migration to Europe, which has become much bigger than just people coming from other countries into Europe. Illegal immigration and Germany's open arms have threatened Chancellor Angela Merkel's government in the past week. She came under heavy criticism for her policies towards immigrants. Italy and Malta also came under heavy criticism for not receiving rescue ships carrying migrants at sea, over 200 of them. And unfortunately, since 2014, when people from Africa and the Middle East began massive migration into Europe during wars, uh, due to wars, hunger and other humanitarian issues, Europe is still obligated to open its borders to many more risking their lives and crossing the Mediterranean. During the meeting in Brussels on the weekend, European Council President Donald Tusk said three of his proposals on curbing migration were accepted by the leaders. As for the text of our compromise, the leaders accepted three proposals I put forward. That is, disembarkation platforms outside Europe, a dedicated budgetary tool in the next MFF to combat illegal migration, as well as boosting EU support for the Libyan Coast Guard. On top of that, we have sent a clear message to all vessels, including those of NGOs operating in the Mediterranean, that they must respect the law and must not obstruct the operation of the Libyan Coast Guard. The summit concluded with member states agreeing to, on a voluntary basis, set up so-called controlled centers to host and transfer migrants that landed on European shores. They say the controlled centers will determine who will be returned and who qualifies for asylum. Remember, this had been the responsibility handed down to Turkey a couple of years ago, a responsibility that Turkey agreed to in exchange for the process of becoming a member of the European Union, as this is something which has still not happened. In fact, it was between Turkey and Greece to sort the migrants out to determine who would be granted asylum and who needed to be sent back. But being sent back to Africa, Libyans specifically, brought up another problem. The existence of detention camps, which have been known to use by people smugglers to sell migrants to the highest bidder. And of course, other inhumane activities going on there. And those in there have told harrowing tales of what life is like, how poor the food is, or how inadequate it is, the lack of medical services, and how insecure the camp is. The International Organization for Migration says 52,240 migrants or refugees arrived in Europe as of June this year, compared with 186,768 in 2017 and over 390 in 2016. I had a chat earlier with International Development Consultant and Vice President and Director of Partnerships, Friends of Nigeria, Abiodun Odunuga, and what he thinks would be the best solution to solving the issues. Abiodo Dunuga, thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure. Uh, so, so do you agree with uh, the European Council president uh, on the creation of disembarkation platforms outside of the EU? Um, I think he has his own points and they could be valid. But I think there are so many externalities around that. Um, just for instance, even what they proposed it was supposed to be a two-sided thing. Um, we were supposed to have a side of one of the propositions is to have a screening camp mm. based in the EU, which allows um, migrants on ground to go through a process where they have to decide their fate mm. and then decide who comes in to be integrated into this community or into the EU as a whole. And they also have this other part, which African nations should have this disembarkation platform. But already Morocco, who was the first person they signaled that to, already said no. And that makes um, logical sense because not even any of the EU member countries have already s signed up to say they would have the screening platform in their own country, mm. not one. And that's the problem with volunteering. It, is, it sort of sounds like they're repeating a, a solution they proposed some time ago. I remember, you know, during the 2015 
the, one of the very first upsurges, mm -hmm. uh, the very first influx of migrants into Europe. Uh, it was agreed that uh, Greece and Turkey mm -hmm. should deal with the migrants. Mm -hmm. The migrants should come all the way to Turkey. Oh, yeah. Turkey decides who stays and who goes. Those who are going back get to Greece and so on. Yeah. That plan also failed. Does it make any sense that they're repeating the same <laughs> issues, they're repeating the same solutions, you know, without actually taking stock? I, I like the fact that you reiterated that they're repeating the same solutions. So they actually came up with five this time around, which on the top of the list is this one you've mentioned. So they have an idea to finance Turkey to be able to be the... That was the plan initially. <laughs> and then they also have um, the financial plan to also support North African countries. That's one. The second um, policy or recommendation that came out of the meeting in Brussels was to also set this disembarkation camp somewhere in Africa, which Morocco already said, no, I'm not doing that. Um, the third one um, is to have internal measures, which allows each member, EU member states, to begin to ensure that no, no secondary migrant you know, go around the countries to ensure that they are stayed where they are. they are. But that also has a major problem because it really affects the DNA of the EU itself meaning um, a, an, a continent that, is, um, that allows free movement of goods and people. So when you have to check, meet people at borders across the EU, it affects the DNA of why EU actually stands for. I think that that law only applies to people who are citizens of the EU. Exactly. Not for, they, didn't, uh, they didn't envisage that they would have you know, a migrant yeah. crisis like this. But we remember that they as for the disembarkation platforms, mm. a similar thing almost exists in Libya yeah. in the form of detention camps. And we know what's happened with that. Oh, yeah. Um, people smugglers have been selling, mm. buying and selling people. 